For a long time, um, until I got overwhelmed, I would bake a sheet, a sheet pan of cake and put it in the back. So like you'd come in and you know when it's your birthday, of course you're gonna make a noise about it. You fuck, you're gonna wear a sash that says birthday girl. And we're like, birthday girl, what's your name? Uh, it's Tina. So I'd go back there and I'd carve out four tiny rectangular cakes. And I would carve like Michelangelo cake out of it to leave a T and an I and an N and an A and throw some icing on it and then walk it out. Before her drinks even arrive, Tina has a cake that fucking spells Tina. <laughs> and she, like the way you, her, you could see her brain melting out of her thing. And that engagement, I'm talking about a complete and total and utter uh, engagement. Right. I mean, I want to engage. I want to include. In this business, you have this opportunity to make something special. Well, wait, let me go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the first drink you made for money? My whole beginning was um, like a lie. I got asked if I knew any bartenders because they needed a bartender at this strip club on Bourbon Street. I was not a bartender, but I immediately said, I'm a bartender. So when they said, we'll see you Monday, I walked down to Tower Video, which was down on um, Decatur Street, and bought a cocktail book, which was stupid because you don't need a cocktail book. What you gonna say? Look. I'm like, I don't even need to know, know how to make a Ramos Gin Fizz. Right. You know, which I didn't even know what that was at that time. But so I walked in there and I was pouring wine out of a box for the girls. I was opening Bud Lights and making Jack and Cokes for the customers. I was sneaking shots of rumple mints to the staff. And that's, those were my, the drinks I made, you know? So the first drink I made for money was probably pulling a Bud Light or pouring a Jack and Coke. Yeah. Uh, so wait, so then, then I gotta ask about this place. Is, is this from your dream journal? What is this? What, what, what happened here? Uh, you know, I, my minor was in fine art, so like I was always making like in, in in tandem, in parallel to like whatever I was doing that wasn't art, I was always making an art of some kind. You right. Know? Um, like little pieces were, were were those things, like these things that are all over the place. So like, you know, as a failed artist, like you, then you build your own gallery. You know. Right. What do you mean failed artist? Well, as in like, I mean, I had a fine art minor, and maybe there was a world where I was going to do art for a living, you know? Mm -hmm. But then you never did because it's not really a realistic thing, realistic goal, or at least maybe you're not that committed to it that you would do the work. Right. So in this sense, like, I built a gallery and I was able to hang my art. And yeah, I just wanna, the back door. Yeah, well, I mean, you say it's not realistic. I mean, this is not realistic. Yeah. This is the, this is a crazy person's bar. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I was going to say, like, when I walked in here this morning, when I've been here when it's been really crowded and when it's been kind of kind of crowded, um, walk in here, it's empty. Mm -hmm. And it really feels like you're walking into a stage set. Right, uh, yeah. And all the props yeah. are here, and you're just waiting for the performers to arrive. Right. And the performers are the customers. Vodka soda is a vodka soda, and a Bud Light's a Bud Light. People come in here, they don't necessarily come in for the Bud Light. Or even if they don't want to have a drink, they, they come in for something else. Yeah, they come in for something else. What's the that? something else? The something else is the, that part where you are part of something. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like you said, you're a player in this, this play that we're putting on. I've sort of engineered it to where the drinks are named after people, right? So like, the best thing about it is that when you order a Palmer Mordecai or a Dr. Austin Dennis. If Dr. Austin Dennis is here, which he's here a lot, he will deliver your drink. And you're like, as you're waiting for it, I'll come up to you and I'm like, listen, here's the policy. If the person who the drink is named after is here, they deliver your drink. But what did that, what did that occur to you? Um, I think it occurred to me from that, working at that strip club at, on Bourbon Street, you know, 22 years ago, because I could tell from that moment, it wasn't about the drinks, right. you know? It wasn't about that box wine. It was about you being present for that person. I was a guest at that strip club and it was Mardi Gras. I remember that Playboy had rented out that place and so like Miss October was dancing on the bar. The bartender was there. I looked between Miss October's legs and I said, this must be the most awesome job ever. And he goes, please kill me. <laughs> and I was just like, what a weird thing for him to say. And I forgot about it. And then I worked there for four yeah. years. Four years later at Mardi Gras, I was at that same bar behind the bar. Miss October wasn't there, but I mean, some girl was there, drama or summer, or I can't remember who, but a customer said to me, this must be the most awesome job. And reflexively I said, 
please kill me. And in that moment, I was just like, that's what he meant. That's what he meant. Shit, now I get it. It took four years of being here. Yeah, that's what it was. I don't know because every day right now is such a struggle. Like every day is one foot in front of the other. Every day, like I wake up and I write down the number of days on my finger. It's impossible. You know, I had my first therapy session the other day. Really? Yeah. Like two your hours. First? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's your surprise. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that's that's well, true. I mean, but in a way, why would you? You don't really. I mean, that's what this is. You think it is? It, it, it was. I mean, for a customer. For a customer. For a, yeah, for a customer it is. But on this side of the bar, when you know you're the one that is in charge of uh, everything, right? It's it's just not doable because it's it, it becomes joyless, you know. And this thing is such. Imagine Willy Wonka just be like, Shh, please kill me. Please kill, me. please kill me. You know, and like you're like you're Willy Wonka. Why? You have a, a bubble machine igniter on your belt. You know why can't you? And you wanna? You're like just please kill me. You know, Willy Wonka was giving away his factory. He was. I was please kill me. Yeah, his please kill me moment. He's like, yeah, it's great. L let, me, let me let me follow this through, then I'll, I'll come back to this. But it, it that's what people say. In all, all, almost all hospitality, like it looks like, oh, it's so much fun, so much fun, and so e it seems and you get easy. to hang out so fun. here yeah. all the you time. Get to hang, get to hang out. out. Yeah. You know, if you said to me, like, you don't know how hard it is, I'm like, well, you haven't gone to any trouble to make this anything other than this glorious kind of fun place where I can forget how right. hard I work or how hard you work. So I think, I, I think it's yeah. The understanding is like you think that you're going to stand over there, have a few drinks, shake some hands, and go home. You know. Yeah. And like the reality is that your dick is gonna fall off. <laughs> you know? Please kill me. Please kill me. <laughs> what do you love about a bar? I love the people that come into a bar. Let me give you another example. Um, in all the emails I've been getting about us closing and how special it is to people, people have, have sought me out. This guy tells me that his first date with his now wife was in this bar. He tells me that on that date he dressed up as a cookie monster. He tells me Just that. There. Yeah, which is here. He tells me that. He got a second date from this woman based on the fact that he was the kind of person that would put on a Cookie Monster costume. He says, I want to let you know that the reason I have my wife right now is one of the reasons is because of your bar and that Cookie right. Monster costume. Even after closing, like, I mean, I think that those are the reasons, those things that I can make a difference with a drink or a Cookie Monster costume or like even this, you know, like when people are like, can you tell me how the, the, the bubble bubbles go? And I just, I'll take it and I'll hand it to him. I'm like, top button starts it, bottom button stops it. And they're like, what now? And they like, I mean, this is a 30, 40 year old person. They're like, what's, hap what's happening right now, you know? And you're gonna wake up in October. Yeah. And where are you gonna go get a drink? I don't know that I'm gonna have a drink. Uh, you know, I, uh, I Google searched, what is the furthest ge geographical place from Birmingham, Alabama? It is a, a town called Papatawau. It is on a, the southern tip of New Zealand. It's 31 hours away. And I was just thinking to myself, how great would that be symbolically if I got on a plane, it's uh, 31 hours, $1,500 flight, um, and just got to that spot, got to the city of Papatawau, just took the deepest possible breath, and then got back on that plane and came back. You know, And what if that's all I really needed to just recharge? My guess is that you'll do that and go there you'll walk to a place and someone there will say, what'll it be? What'll it be? I love that idea. I mean, <laughs> like, it'll, it'll say, it. kill me. Kill me, <laughs> yes. What, what time of bar is it your favorite part of the bar? And then what, what do you love about it? So here's my favorite time. It, they're all my favorite time for different reasons, right? Four o'clock is great because a person wanders in maybe who hasn't been here before. Maybe there's five or 10 people in there, tops. Those are five or 10 people that you could spend so much time with. You could just, mm -hmm. your energy is all on them. You know, you're one, welcoming them because you need that you know especially if you're coming in singles and right. there's, at four o'clock there's a lot of singles um and you know the potential to have a repeat customer because you were able to spend that time with them in the middle it's a bunch of sort of regulars you're taking care of them you're catching up you don't have a lot of time to talk but you're just like you know doing maintenance and then at the end of the night when it gets full full that's that full energy that's where your heart rate goes up that's where the music gets louder that's where the thing is this throbbing organism and it's very exciting you know that's right. when that's when so the, every 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 you know notch on that timeline of the, of the lifetime of a bar in a day has a different reason for you to like it i mean like some people go to a bar as a retreat right like you go to a bar because i'm getting away and i don't want what's outside to be in here i want this place to be i, I don't want my bar to have anything in it that's going to remind me right 
come in here, this is not a retreat. This is like a sensory overload that's fun and joyful. And then you get your check. Yeah. This bar's got a point of view. It does have a point of view, yeah. And I was, you know, talking about how we have switched from these check presenters to these check presenters that, you know, they say something like, you are buying what they're selling, you are living a lie and you know it. When you get your actual bill at the end of the day, you can program it to say, thank you, come again, which everybody does. Mine says, your days are numbered, you know? So from the beginning when you walk in and it says, um, your safety is an illusion and bubbles are raining down your face, to the moment that you close out your tab and it says, your days are numbered, you better enjoy every single one, um, we are engaged. You know, it would be, it'll be very, very easy to not do that. It would be very, very easy to have one of those little padded American Express things. Sure. And there you go, that's the end of it, but that's not the, the point, you know? You know, I had a guy come in here one day and he was um, an older gentleman. He was drinking by himself, he was very quiet. You could tell that he had some burden to him. He asked me about the trophies and he's like, what's the deal with the trophies? And I said, you know, it's, it's just meant to simulate like your home and celebrating, you know, your, all your accomplishments. He goes, let me ask you a question. My son passed away in a car accident. He had a lot of trophies, he was an athlete. I haven't been able to get rid of him and I don't want to get rid of him. I don't want them to end up in the garbage. If I brought them in here, could you put them here? Would, you, would they have a place? And I'm like, absolutely. So he closed out his tab, and then the next day I came here and there was a box uh, up against the door. And it was all of Cory Mumolo's trophies. And 90% of those are trophies from Cory Mumolo. This guy's, you know, and I think he's come in here again. He's come in here just to see them. And he's just like, come in, seeing that I, I my promise, I held my promise, they're there. Right. And he walked out and he was, you know, he had some closure. Mars can do that. Yeah. What does it look like when you come to work and there's no gas left in that tank? I, I think I could do it for five years at 180% or I could do it for 20 years at 50%. Right. I don't think I want to do the latter. Even if you're in the chocolate factory, you know? Right. Even if you're like in, in Hamilton, you know, because everybody's like, Everybody only sees Hamilton once, maybe twice. If you're in Hamilton, you fucking see Hamilton every day. <laughs> yeah. Twice you, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, twice right. sometimes in a fucking matinee, right. you know, where people are on their cell phones. And you're just like, ah, uh, you know, you just lose the flavor for it, you know? You're at that strip club and you're like, this is the best job ever. And then four, four years later, you're like, please fucking kill me. Please kill me. You know? It's hard to put on a, this show every night at this level. And and not, at some point, feel like it's time to, you know, yeah. I th turn the bubble machine off. Turn the bubble machine off, oh yeah, absolutely. I think that's gonna be the most, you remember the last episode, last day episode of Cheers, right? Uh, yeah, I, I was there for that, yeah. Yeah, you were alive there, you weren't there at the taping. I was there at the, yes, I was the producer of it. I was, you're yeah, kidding. Yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> right. No, you're joking. No, no, I'm telling you the truth. I was one of the executive producers of that show for the last four years, for three years. Of Cheers, the TV show? Cheers, the TV show. Bars are important to me. What's happening right now? <laughs> See? What are you talking about? Yeah. No, that's true. Oh, really? So I was there. So, uh, yeah. so I mean, uh, of course, I pictured that moment where like Sam like turns off the lights, he walks up the thing. Uh, I don't think it'll be quite as peaceful and quiet as, the, as what he's talking about, you know? And he was a recovering alcoholic, so he wasn't, right. he didn't, right. like, I mean, I already have put aside the last Sex Panther in a bottle. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm going to take it out and like, right. you know, Austin, make me the last Sex Panther ever served in this, in this place, you know? Um, but I picture it like that, where you know, there's this one last moment where you turn off the lights and you walk outside and, like, and you call last call for the last time in your bar, and that's my touchstone, you know, is for every bartender, I guess, is that moment. Is that going to be hard or joyful or both? Whew, it's going to be so complicated, you know. It's going to be very, very complicated. Um, I don't know that I can talk about it even now. Well, it hasn't happened yet. It's happened in my mind ten thousand times mm -hmm. already. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I don't know what it'll be like. I mean, on day one when we opened, there was a lineup outside, which I didn't expect. Um, I opened up the doors. <clears throat> we weren't ready for it. It was a Friday. Um, I had a moment where I opened the door and just shook everybody's hand as they walked in, you know? And when the last person walked in, I sort of looked in and I'm like, all right, let's do this. But then I was just like, oh fuck. <laughs> I was the other bartender, right? And we ended up getting our asses kicked um, until two in the morning and you know for somebody who spent their whole life trying to get here it's everything it could it could possibly be
you coming back? I gotta check the flights from Papa Tawai. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta see what the what the schedule, the yeah. flight schedule. Who gets the bubble machine? Well, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question.